Well done. A fine audio program and video. What should we call that body that was ready? Hmm. I don't know. Roger, you got any good ones? Oh, he's got Sleeping Baby. He would like to call it Sleeping Baby. Well, you can go to Showbot.tv. Yeah, we can do that. Showbot.tv. Uh, oh, I will add that around two. I can do it after the titles. Uh, top, we have, uh, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I believe that is a reference to. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Um, Scott finally pronounces Xiaomi right. I noticed that. What? Listen, thing? it's not going to be our title, but thank no. you for noticing. Yeah, okay. that was that was. I was. I had my hand on the button, and you were like, "No, I got this." Here in America, we don't we don't put X's in front of our words. <laughs> yes, it's Christmas. Yeah, that's true. Um, Professor Xavier, uh, there is one for um. X right. Said uh. Said, no wait, what happened to the uh? Oh, simmer down, Alexa. Raising your voice. Alexa. That's pretty good. There's also raising your voice in parentheses assistant usage. Um, hmm. it's a it's a pretty short list today. Maybe people haven't. Added. Hey, I'm talking here. <laughs> hey, I'm talking here. That's not bad. Computer, make me some eggs. I like that. <laughs> I really like that for some reason. I don't know why. Make me some eggs. All right. Because it has a bit of Star Trek in it. Yeah. Should we go with computer make me some eggs or am I nuts? I like that one. Yeah. Let's do it. I like it. Well, well timed, Steve I. Mm -hmm. You caught me at the right moment. Well done, sir. Computer. Listen, make I like me some eggs. <laughs> I repeat, I, I, I appreciate all of the votes for my pronunciation. <laughs> ah, those are votes of love. <laughs> A special special no mention though goes to ICU's AI. I'm talking here. I think that's funny. Yeah, I'm talking here. If you do, uh, it, Miss Terpster. <laughs> <laughs> he does the worst New York guy. It's the best. It's the best worst. Uh, he told me the funniest story. They were um, we were on hypothetical help, and he was talking about that viral video of him and uh, Hodor there at the at the, the one Christian there. Yeah, that whole thing. And he said, the part nobody knows about is they were all at that screening in London, and he uh, he can't fit in normal seats at all because he's so tall. Oh, yeah, he's a big guy. So he has to, when he does that, he has to sit out in the aisle with the steps, like where people walk down to go get their seats. And he has to sit in the middle there for like for a whole movie because there's nothing oh, wow. big enough to, to take a guy who's six foot 11. So there you go. And he did it willingly. He's like, yeah, I'm used to this. It's just the way he lives his life, I guess. I mean, he is just... He's a, I mean, that's why he plays Hodor. He's a, a very tall person. Enormous person. He's just uh, formidable and the sweetest guy. Yeah, we've had him on Sword and Laser, and he's just he's so nice. He's a big Warcraft fan. Yeah, I love, he's been on The Instance twice. He's so nice on there, and he's always been just willing to... He wants to come on again. We keep talking about it. I think he may have more time now, but, you know... Wait a minute. Why is that? Spoiler. <laughs> I'm just saying. Much because like they're not shooting right now. In season five, there was, uh, you know, they didn't need any scenes. So he had some time away. That's true. That's true. It's all you're saying. Well, the... so I was going to add around at 2, two o'clock and 2.14, Tom, your voice was kind of echoey for like maybe 10 seconds or so, and then it went back to normal. Yeah, I heard that, I heard that too. too. Oh, you did? In fact, I hear it right now. Oh, I hear that on, I hear that on Roger's speakers, but not not before, not when he's muted. Yeah, let me... I'm going to mute myself. Okay, yeah. Uh, now I don't hear it. Yeah, I never heard it. So it was happening. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't like it was being picked up by someone's microphone and then, uh, you know, broadcast after a speaker. It felt like... Maybe a codec delay or something. Yeah. But if you didn't hear it, Scott, it probably didn't make it into the... It probably was just on my end. Yeah, just at least I didn't notice it. I've heard it before on the show, but then you guys didn't notice it? Like Tom... Now I hear it again. Oh, yeah, week. because my I'm using my the mic on my webcam. Yeah. The last, like last week, Tom had a moment where he... It sounded like he digitally stuttered through something. No, but, I figured that out. 
Yeah. Uh, that was actually the computer memory oh. I had to restart because uh, it caused a problem with something I recorded too. Mm. That was a different thing now. Oh, okay. All good. Um, yeah, unless we could figure out what it was. It, I don't know what to do about it. Yeah. Okay. Minor. Sounds minor. Rare. Rare and minor. Uh, minor. Sounds like a NAMLA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> While you're holding a baby. Say she that. doesn't know what that is yet. <laughs> it sounds like a NAMLA meeting. That was funny. Creepy, but funny. <laughs> that really made if me. If you'd laugh. like more of this kind of wisdom, check out East Meets West. <laughs> I really liked our episode last night. It was good. Yeah, it was a good. new episode. All new episodes. A new season of the best of East Meets West. I love to hear new it. Season. Yeah, we counted seasons by like every four years. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Uh, when I when we did episode one. I called the album title The Best of East Meets West as a joke to myself. Because if we only have one episode, this is The Best of East Meets West. I've called, that's the album title in the ID3 tags ever since. Nice. But now it's a joke on the other end of like, every single episode is The Best of East Meets West. They're all the best. You can't have a favorite episode. They're the best. All right. Although, you know, I mean... That's like having a favorite yeah, you know, dog. You, you have multiple children. <laughs> do, you, do your kids ever bug you to, to, like, who do you like the best? No. Ne uh, we've never had that conversation that I know of. I don't think Kim has either. No, we're, once in a while, like, I'll say something that's specific to one of their t sets of talents or something. Like, if Carter, because Carter draws, so I'll say to her, or they both kids will be in the house, and I'll say, Hey, Cardi, you gotta come look at this. You'd totally appreciate this. And then Nick would go, "Oh, because I wouldn't." Like he'd say something like that. Okay. But then I'm like, "You get over here too, if you want to." You know, like we'll we usually blur right through it. But no, they've never done that whole like, "Who's your favorite?" or any of that. <laughs> Do you ever say, "No, you 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 can come look, but you won't appreciate it." Yeah, you won't appreciate it. You don't like it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're not the one that would like it. <laughs> we, we You'll really think it's hard. dumb. I'm just we saying. Try, we try really hard not to label them, but yeah, know. yeah. You're not my favorite, so you're not gonna see. It. <laughs> Tom, you'll appreciate this. I got a, I got a private IM from the Path on Hulu. Uh, they had seen me tweet about how much I like the soundtrack and enjoyed oh, okay. the season, so they sent me this message. That says, "Hello, friend. We have reason to believe you're interested in climbing the ladder with us. The Meyerist movement has something special to mail you. If you're interested, please respond with your full name and address. We promise not to share." Share it or store it in the future. And Weird. I and so they I think they're sending me a t shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. I assume that's all in universe language. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's the the show's all about like some weird cult and Right, right. And and, and I still watch the entire What if Jesse the Pinkman show made. is actually run by a cult? <laughs> this is their way. Like you just think it's marketing to begin with. Next thing you know you're in Guyana. Well for I'm going to admit something here. Part of me read that, and it felt creepy. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, just part of me was like, ugh. It's like, let's take it down a notch, guys. Like, it's already weird in the show. Let's, you know, but but then I, you know, backed off and everything. Are you, are you sure you were supposed to read that out loud? I mean. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, now, oh, wait, the door's being knocked. I'm not <laughs> what's happening. It's like, coming awfully hard. I don't know what's happening. Uh, are the phone rings? Oh man! Do you watch uh, Do you watch Wayward Pines? Uh, no, but I've heard it's awesome. That's their deal. Is like the phone rings. That means something. Is it? Do you like it? It's fine. Like if I squint, I can pretend I'm watching Twin Peaks, kind of. Okay, but it's that kind of. <laughs> yeah, thing. it's not bad. It's not right. bad. I'm into it's, that. It's kept me interested. Okay, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. My the biggest problem is they're sort of trying to split the difference between an anthology show and a series. So mm -hmm. it's they're picking up a few years after last season, uh, and with a new main character. Mm. And so I'm like, mm, okay, well, let's let's see where we go with this, I guess. Yeah, sometimes that stuff works, I guess. Yeah. Um. Do you uh? You heard you know who Joe Hill is right? The Stephen King. That's Stephen King's son. 
He yeah. Did, yeah, I read Lock and Key. Okay, so his new book, Fireman, uh-huh. is supposed to be really, really cool. Uh, it's about people who spontaneously combust. But here's my question. <laughs> Why is it that I'm so interested in that kind of genre fiction? It's totally interesting to me. What, the spontaneously combustible? That or, or um, like this, his dad's book, The Stand, is one of my favorite books of all time. Sure. Okay. Like, I love like not necessarily zombie apocalyptic fiction necessarily, but I love end of world Story. Oh man, yeah, I, I I love apocalypse stuff. Yeah, I just can't get enough of it. I don't I really know what it is. Yeah, I think it's a fascination with the fact that we're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. I wonder if you would like the. So I just I'm in the middle of the second book, but there's a series called the Hater series. I don't know if you you know I've heard of it, but it's this British author, and it's all set in London. There's a lot of British Britishisms in it, but it's um there's this point in time where people changed they became labeled haters, but basically what happened is they, ch they changed them. If anyone around them was not changed with them, they would have an uncontrollable urge to murder everybody who wasn't them. Oh, wow. And it became this... So a little more than hating. Yeah, they, they just call them haters, but they basically divide society into two chunks, the, the unchanged or just normal people trying to survive, and then the haters who, if they're among their own kind of other change, they're fine. It's They're just like normal society and they're trying to survive as well, but they cannot coexist with those who were not changed. It's this, it's this weird idea of like almost like they went rabid in only one way, and that's just against those who aren't them. Now, if you are hating on the haters on Twitter, yeah, you're just a hater hater. Then you're a hater hater, and then if you are a skateboarder, you're a hater hater skater. Okay, but with an eight in it though. Right, obviously. Anyway, I don't. I just I, the reason I say that is just I don't. I'm, yeah, no, that's intriguing. I love that stuff. I don't know what it is. I, I'm way more interested in stories about what if than I am about what is. Sometimes maybe that's reflective of just where I'm at right now. I don't know. I well, just, yeah. I mean, to me, it's more entertaining because it, I don't know. I, I I I'm tempted to say a lot of flippant things like. Well, I got enough drama in my life without, you know, reliving somebody else's. Right. I had a hard enough time growing up without reading about somebody else growing up. Yeah. But that's just silly. Like, yeah. if it's really well done, it's still fascinating. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I'm maybe there's just sort of a a need for escapism or something. I don't know. And I feel like I'm doing this with comics too. Like I'm I'm way more into this comicsology subscription than I would be Marvel Unlimited because. I don't know. I just feel like I'm getting stories that I haven't heard already. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is. is I'm being, I'm being, I'm interested in things that aren't just rehashes, or if they are, they're they have such a unique twist that it just throws me. You know, and I think it ties in a little bit into the spoiler stuff mm. because what what people who are really against spoilers are like, I'm in it for being surprised, yeah. right? Yeah. And what is one of the biggest nitpicks of a movie is like it was so predictable, right? A mainstream literary fiction story about coming of age sure. is entirely predictable because you know she's going to come of age, right? Like, yeah. that's how it ends. Puberty yeah. is over. Yeah. Like, I, uh, people that like rom coms, like my wife loves yeah, yeah. dresses. I, I sat down and watched it with her and I went, oh. You get a di if you're looking for unpredictability and a, and a story that, that surprises you, then that, that's not the, that's not the right kind of story. You get something else out of those stories. You get yeah. to you get to live the emotions of those people. And if you're not interested in that, you're like, eh, I don't really want to live the emotions of those people. Then that kind of story is not going to appeal to you. I yeah. don't know. That's my best guess. I think you're probably right. I think that's why I like uh, the season of Game of Thrones so much because it's all stuff we haven't been told yet. Yeah. And it's not just you know story points or spoilers in those story points, but it's I just feel like new things are happening that I didn't already get previewed because I read the books. I don't know. I'm really enjoying this season, though. Holy yeah, crap. me too. It's this hit. last episode was a little slower. Yeah, maybe compared to the rest of the season so far. I mean, that, that final um, <laughs> that final Mel Gibson not on the Scottish Plains speech by, uh, <laughs> by Daenerys on the dragon was something else, man. That was great. I mean, there were moments like that, but, yeah. but yeah, generally yeah. speaking, you know. Mm. Also, I'm, well... I want to get into spoiler territory, but Arya's storyline was abrupt, I thought. Kind of 
you know. Yeah, it feels like they're skipping through a lot, and obviously they are, yeah. uh, to get us to get us somewhere a little faster. Because sure. I'm like, really, we spent all that time with Jacqueline Hagar. Like that was a lot. Maybe it pays off. Maybe something she's you know something she has learned will come up. I think she will, and it will, and I think she'll defeat you know who. But I just like the. I've really liked that, and I've been I've been I've been willing to go slow with that because I find that fascinating. There's something very gothic and weird about that whole bit, and then yeah. have it all turn on a dime like that was just it kind of threw me a little bit. Good though, really good. All right, uh, well that is it for us. Thanks all for watching, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Bye Ellie. Bye Ellie.